Hey guys, it's Wade again. The convergence between my respective mill CNC and lathe CNC upgrade projects are both based off of Franco from Franco CNC on YouTube. Off of his diagrams and what he's come up with, I, he's actually modeled all the parts and he's put them in Fusion 360. Just, uh, I mean, amazingly beneficial. I remember around you, Franco, I'll definitely buy you dinner and libations of your choice because he's just saved so much work in creating all these different parts, putting them in Fusion 360, like I said, catting them out, and then actually providing diagrams with all the information. So I'm going to be shaking down, or I have shaken down, the PM30 mil CNC by making these parts for the uh, Microlux 7x16 lathe. And I will point out that Franco's stuff is, as it says here, 7x10, 7x12, 7x14 lathes. I have a 7x16, so I did have to extrapolate some of the data, mainly just on the Z-axis ball screw. Everything else is pretty much the same, of course. So I'm going to show these parts being made. I will probably have a little bit of discussion at the beginning of the part, and then I'll show some of the part. I'll probably speed up the video footage, and then I'll probably have a little bit something to say at the end of each part. But that's it. Let's get into it. So this program off of the probe app is, as you can see, probing a three-axis corner, and that's what I'm going to do here. That's what I did previously. That is just an amazing finish. I mean, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. There's, I mean, as you can see, the lines are very even. I carried it all the way across with the backside swooshing around. Um, man, this thing is just super smooth. All right, very happy with the Superfly. Another beautiful finish. Just super, super impressed. I guess, well, I guess that's why they call it the super fly, huh? All right, looks like we got some good holes. So far, so good. I'm really digging how everything is working out. I got to dial in that, uh, how to set that uh, fog buster, obviously. It's not staying, it needs to be a little bit tighter. So here's the other side of those holes. You can see some scratches along the edge. Those are from the parallels, because I'm tapping this thing down. So, I mean, this is going to be working part on the lathe. So no big deal, but there's the finish, there's the holes. So I'm going to use these holes to hold the part down so I can mill the perimeter uh, in one shot. So I'm set up here to do the final cut. 
on this part this is for the lathe hopefully when we get done that block of aluminum will look like that yes i've got it on a piece of plywood it's probably going to be a few thou off in different directions i already know that from this front corner to this front corner it's about three thou off but again uh, that's fine for the tolerance for this part our work coordinate system is all set to zero i'm going to shoot this thing up change it out for the first tool second tool that we use, it may need to be probed. Yeah, my first pass I had a overly aggressive cut, sort of pulling the tool out. So uh, I've been, I'm just going to go in multiple passes. This might be a little too light, but better safe than sorry. I have two thousand stock to leave, that's why it's not touching that back part. About four inches per minute. There's two passes per step. Yeah, we don't need that last pass. It got down far enough on that one. I went ahead and post-processed this part again and took out tool 14 and uh, just uh, the finishing passes with tool 11. Uh, I suspect that the mill CNC 12 along with probe app will one to probe tool 11. Yep. I like to do a height check to make sure it's not going to crash. For some reason I'm a little leery of that. It's doing one final spring pass. Look somewhat close to what we were trying to achieve, which was that guy right there. This is going to be the first side of another part. It should go on the front of the the carriage.
Tool 5 is new. It hasn't been in the lineup yet. There's side A complete. On the other side of that same part, I'm setting up this back corner as the work coordinate system. Our work coordinate system is zeroed out. Okay guys, this is side two of that part. Doing a quick height check, set the camera up. Alright, in goes tool 5, the diminutive but powerful tool 5, fire her up. Again, it's going to spin around for a little bit. I didn't know how to get rid of those extra steps in the beginning, so I just went ahead and processed this to get this part done. Okay, this is number four of six parts completed. When I discussed the part count for the lathe CNC conversion, I forgot two on another page, which are the small homing slash limit switch brackets. So I decided to go ahead and knock those out first just to get them out of the way. Plus I wanted to play around with milling a an angled piece of aluminum. So here we go. Except for a very, very slight nick on that back corner. It looks good. Grabbed it by a few thousands right on this corner right here. Nicked it. Okay, now we're going to do the other side of this bracket. This width right here, taking so much off, was just a headspace and timing issue with me as far as trying to get this thing cut quickly. To get about three inches wide worth of brackets, I decided to use almost a whole entire foot of angle aluminum. I was cutting this on the miter saw and it caught the corner. That's why I didn't have it centered. I had it taken it all off of 
this side initially and then this side. So it actually turned out pretty good because I was able to get rid of that nasty corner. The Venerable Tool 12 going in. One for good measure. I'm taking 40 thousandths off a pass just to keep it comfortable. I haven't figured out in the Fusion 360 cam after I have 20,000 stocks to leave and I want to come right back and, and uh, take it off and I redo the same uh, derivative program, I can't seem to get rid of how it wants to go back and retrace the same um, cutting steps. I've looked around, but just to get it done, like I said, that's why I've been just continuing on and pressing forward. I'll figure it out eventually. It's not exactly perfect, but for flipping it over, and, uh, you know, I'm a, about a thou off on each side when I'm putting it on this wood, but, you know, I'm getting it fairly close. I'll just hit it with a file, of course. Doesn't have to be perfect, it's a bracket, but again, it allows me to practice and I wanted to try some angled aluminum to see how it would work, so I'm happy with it. I finally got some end mills delivered today that are narrow enough in diameter to cut the slots in these brackets for the home switches. Okay, we're all at zero. I'm gonna put this little guy in, let's make some slots. Since tool number three is a new tool, I expect we'll get some probing action. Just gotta clean this part up and another one complete in the quest for the blade CNC conversion. <laughs> 